just when you think Adobe have sunk as low as any monopolistic multinational corporate monolith can, they surprise us all once more. No, I'm not talking about their shady AI implementation, corrupt business practices, or even the horrendous subscription opt-out system. I'm talking about money. Yep, they've put their prices up again and automatically moved anyone on that all-you-can-eat package onto a new, more expensive option because AI. And specifically for photographers, removing the excellent 20 gig $15 a month package and replacing with a $30 a month one if you're a new user or 24 bucks a month for existing users. So, if Adobe have pushed you too far this time and you've cancelled your subscription, the question is this. What do you replace Photoshop with? Got some solid recommendations for Mac users like me that should ease the migration and save you a substantial amount of money into the bargain. Welcome to the resistance. No subscription required. Photoshop is kind of a niche unto itself. It began life as a bitmap editor for tweaking JPEGs, but transformed into a Swiss army knife tool for graphic designers, visual artists, illustrators, photographers, and anyone that's ever wanted to remove an X from a group photo. There are alternatives to Photoshop, but being crystal clear, replicating its tool set feature for feature is not going to happen. Fortunately, most people hardly scratched the surface of Photoshop's functionality anyway and instead just use a few of its core features. And finding an alternative to those is pretty straightforward by comparison. Affinity Photo is, without a doubt, the app that gets closest to that Adobe Photoshop secret source for Mac users. It's not a like-for-like -like swap, though. Far from it. Let's talk about the feature gap first, and you may find there's nothing on the list that you've ever used in your photographic workflow anyway. AI is a huge point of difference, of course, with Photoshop having Firefly image generation along with super resolution, distraction removal, generative fill, generative expand, and AI masking. Firefly still sucks despite a major update recently, but the generative fill is useful as long as you're prepared to re-roll when it sticks a traffic cone in your beach scene. Other features missing in Photoshop that are not available in Affinity Photo include smart objects, neural filters, full plug-in support, UXP panels, and a video timeline. It goes both ways, though, and there are features you will gain if you ditch Photoshop in favor of Affinity Photo. Astrophotographers love the live stacks, which enable you to process astro sequences, bring out the detail, and remove high ISO noise. It has live filters, live masks, macros, batch jobs, 32-bit float, and with its personas, a similar raw processing workflow to Photoshop's Adobe Camera Raw to Photoshop Pipeline. In terms of common ground, Affinity has full CMYK support, spot color and Pantone editing, along with soft proving and PDFX support, which means it can be used in pre-press just like Photoshop. It is, of course, also daggeringly cheaper than Photoshop and can be purchased free of a restrictive subscription. It's a safe purchase too, since it's now owned by Canva and its future seems assured. You can also purchase the entire Affinity Suite, photo, publisher, and designer to broadly replicate the holy trinity of Adobe Design Apps, Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator, and there is excellent interoperability between those apps. If I have one complaint about Pixelmator Pro, it's that the developers never did a great job of explaining the difference between it and its sister app, Photomator. And so, if you're unsure, here's the deal. 
Photomator is a raw photo editor with full Apple Photos library support, and Pixelmator Pro is a kind of hybridized Mac version of Photoshop, which is to say that if you never do any composite or design work, then you need Photomator. If you're trying Pixelmator Pro for the first time, having previously used Photoshop, then you should be prepared for an unfamiliar interface. Pixelmator Pro definitely won't be suitable for all Photoshop refugees because it works internally in RGB only. You can export in CMYK, but you can't edit a document with CMYK colors. It has no merge tools. That means no panorama, HDR or focus stacking, and the color depth tops out at only 16-bit. It's not all missing features, though. It does have a useful selection of machine learning tools, including upscaling, denoising, background removal, subject selection, color match, and also enhance, only one of which can be found in Affinity Photo. In terms of vector 2D and design work in general, Pixelmator Pro has everything you need, with full support for PSD, SVG, PDF, Illustrator, and EPS files. For photographers, there's a full-blown RAW editing tool, which is comparable to Adobe Camera RAW. And above all, since it is a Mac-only app, it has a proper Mac interface that fully complies with Apple's design rules. Acorn is one of those Mac apps that's been around for ages, since 2007, in fact, and has just received a big point release with version 8 hitting the App Store earlier this year. If you look at the feature set, it seems like a good alternative to Photoshop, as long as you don't need any of the pre-press stuff or any image merging tools. It has the core Photoshop-like features, an ACR-like raw editor, layers, text, vector tools, and filters, and yes, even AI subject selection and AI upscale. It's also currently on sale for just 25 bucks, subscription-free, which is a bloody good price, whatever way you look at it. Corel Photo Paint is another app that's been around for a bloody long time and is only available as part of the Corel Draw graphics suite. It does have proper pre-press and CMYK capabilities if printing photos is your thing and features a very familiar Photoshop-like interface and tool set. In fact, if you scroll through the sub-menus in Photo Paint, you could be forgiven for thinking you were using Photoshop. In terms of the big ticket features, it does not have any AI capabilities at all, but given the backlash against AI, that might actually seem like an advantage to some potential purchasers. The interface, meanwhile, is retro looking, but all the standard features you would expect to find are in there, the layers, the filters, the presets, the vector tools, and the brushes, etc., while all four of these apps could be used as a replacement for Photoshop, they have a diverse range of tools and features and entirely different interface designs too. Which is to say that you need to look properly at the feature list before purchasing any of them in order to get the tools you need the most. That being said, let's talk about these apps in reverse order of desirability, from least desirable to most. And coming up in last place is Corel Photo Paint. I'll be completely honest with you. The reason I've put it in last place is primarily because it is ridiculously expensive. And if you're ditching Adobe because they're priced you out of the market, then this app is definitely not for you. You can only purchase Photo Paint as part of the Corel Draw graphics suite which costs 59 bucks a month for the subscription, or pucker those sphincters, 880 bucks one-time purchase for the 2025 version only. But even if it was available at 30 bucks for a lifetime purchase, I still wouldn't use it because it's basically Photoshop from 2007 with a worse interface. It's also slow as fuck, and I have literally no idea who would buy this suite in preference to Adobe? I wanted to like Acorn more than I did, partly because it's made by a small, independent developer team, and partly because you can buy it for an extremely reasonable 25 bucks lifetime. It's a nicely coded little app with a pleasing enough interface and a range of photo and 
2D slash vector related tools. There's also a surprisingly diverse range of adjustments, filters, and effects. I think my main problem with the app is the raw editor, which is quite limited and slow. I found it hard to get reliable imports with light and colors looking the way I wanted. In terms of flagship features, it has an AI subject select tool, which Works okay if you're prepared to spend a little bit of time finessing the results. And a super resolution tool, which is fast and did a better upscale job for me than Topaz Photo AI 4. It's a quirky little app with esoteric features that feel like the developer added them for himself rather than the punters. For instance, there's a live text tool that can recognize text in a bitmap image you load, a layered screenshot tool that saves all the screen furniture as individual layers, and a data merging tool that enables you to generate images with content populated from a CSV file. Don't get me wrong, they're all interesting tools, but it's a weird collection with some decidedly esoteric inclusions. In terms of design, the layer and vector engine is both smooth and capable with tools such as text on path, circle text, shapes, and plentiful modifiers for those vector paths and shapes. There's no doubt at all that Acorn gives you a hell of a lot for your money, with its feature set eclipsing that of photo paint, and it would be a solid recommendation from me, but for the fact that Pixelmator Pro has a similar feature set and price tag, and is faster and a cleaner looking app. Affinity Photo is the most capable of the four apps in this little roundup, and so you're probably wondering why exactly I put it in second place. An army of fans rise up and shake their fists angrily at the screen. Uh, don't worry, Affinity Photo fans, I'm actually putting an equal first place with Pixelmator Pro, because while I feel that both are solid Photoshop alternatives, they cater to entirely different kinds of users. Affinity Photo is a far more technical app than Pixelmator Pro and includes some truly esoteric features, many of which go far beyond the scope of Photoshop. Focus merge, compound masks, live mesh filter, in-painting, Pantone color matching, full PSD support, extensive brush support, live 360 pano projections. It's a nerd's paradise. If you used Photoshop in a highly technical way, then you should 100% get Affinity Photo because there is nothing anywhere that gets this close. Personally speaking, I've never been a fan of the Affinity Photo interface, which looks like a half-assed port from Windows, and I'm not keen on those weird non-standard icons either. But if you need to do any kind of technical photo editing in combination with Vector or 2D additions, it's far and away your best bet so long as you're prepared to put in the time and effort to completely relearn how to edit photos and composites. But the thing about Photoshop is that it wasn't used simply by knowledgeable graphics and photo nerds. Its presence in the Creative Cloud suite, adopted by a stupidly high percentage of businesses, meant it was also a popular app with more casual users too. And in my opinion, Pixelmator Pro makes a more compelling case for the average Mac user than Affinity Photo, with a combination of tools that are far more suited to less technical usage. I'm not suggesting Pixelmator Pro isn't as powerful, far from it. It just doesn't have all the super technical stuff and, let's be honest, highly niche features shoehorned into Affinity. Instead, it's all the core stuff you actually used in Photoshop. If you're a photographer first and a designer second, I'd also say that Pixelmator Pro's highly capable RAW adjustments tools are much more in line with Adobe Camera RAW than Affinity Photo's hybrid workflow. Pixelmator Pro's AI subject select is better than Affinity Photo's, and it also has an excellent AI super resolution tool, AI background masks, AI denoise, AI color match, AI repair slash clone, machine learning auto tools for post-processing, a beautiful UI for graphic design, soft proofing, color management, and yes, PSD file support. Oh, it's also owned by Apple these days. 
If you're a Mac user and you've finally been pushed too far by Adobe, then there is life outside the glamorous creative cloud bubble, but it's more children of men than the Matrix. Whichever app you choose to fill the Photoshop-sized hole in your life, there is definitely going to be a period of adjustment as you rebuild your muscle memory. There will undoubtedly be days when you become frustrated and curse yourself for ever ending your creative cloud subscription. But like quitting smoking, the rewards of persistence far outweigh any temporary frustration. Moreover, you could buy all three of my recommended apps, Affinity Photo, Pixelmator Pro, and Acorn outright for less than a single year's subscription to Adobe's cheapest plan. In some ways, it's the difference between renting creativity and actually owning it. Hopefully, I've given you guys some food for thought there and some things to consider if you're cutting Adobe out of your life. Have you cancelled on Adobe yet? Or are you giving it serious thought? Do let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please do remember to give it a like. And if you got value from it, consider subscribing to my channel for more photo, video, and drone-related content from me. Till the next time, guys. Ta-ta.